In a previous video, we learned how to compute the chi-square test of association for these aspirin and heart attack data. And in that video, we also learned how to compute Kramer's V, which is like a correlation coefficient. The way we compute it ranges from zero to one. And so it is an index of effect size. But we've also learned these other more popular indices of effect size in class. And so I want to go through those uh, indices in this video quickly here. So you can see the first one that we can talk about is the odds ratio, or just OR here. And as I mentioned in class, it's arbitrary how you compute the odds ratio. So there's a number of ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you two examples from this table, this uh, contingency table. Now, one thing though to keep in mind is that most researchers will set up the odds ratio according to the treatment. So the treatment here is the row, or is comprised of the rows. So we have placebo and aspirin here. So instead of working with the columns, we'll work with the rows here. So there are two ways to do, to do so. So the first odds ratio here, you can see that I have uh, 189 over 10845. So that is the placebo. And then I have that divided by the aspirin numbers. So 104 divided by 10933. When you work that out, you find an odds ratio of 1.83. So we'll just go ahead and say it's approximately two. So the odds are two to one. Now, how do we interpret that? What do we mean by two to one? Well, as I mentioned in class, the way that you want to do this is start with that numerator and label it. So there we have the placebo numbers. So those who consume the placebo were, now we go to the odds ratio, twice as likely two, now we go to that numerator of the numerator, which is 189, so that's the heart attack column. So those who consume the placebo are twice as likely to suffer a fatal heart attack. And now we go to the last part of it here, compared to those who consume the aspirin. So make sure you label everything and then walk through it systematically like that and you'll interpret it correctly. So now here I've computed the odds ratio a little bit differently. I've just reversed it, so I've put the aspirin on the top and the placebo on the bottom, and we see the result is 0.55. Now that is, in fact, the reciprocal of 1.83, so I'm not learning anything different here. It's just looking at the same results from a different angle, and that makes a little more sense if we go ahead and just round that to 0.5 or a half, and so you're twice as likely or half as likely. You can see just we're just uh, flipping that. So again, we start with the numerator, and we see that those who consume the aspirin were half as likely to suffer a fatal heart attack compared to those who consume the placebo. So notice as long as you follow the steps here, you're going to set up your odds ratio and interpret it correctly. Now is it a small, medium, or large effect? A two to one odds ratio does sound like a, an impressive effect, but it actually turns out it's not so impressive. You really want odds ratios of four to one or even greater than that. So two to one does sound like an impressive uh, effect size, but it really isn't. So now let's take a look at the other three effect sizes that we learned. So the first is the relative risk reduction, the RRR. And to compute that, we need the percentages. Now, again, you're going to work with the treatment. So you want to look at the control group first, and that's going to be the placebo here. We'll need the total number of people who consume the placebo, and that's 11034. And of those individuals, 189 suffered a fatal heart attack. So you can see here I've converted that into a percentage. So that's 1.7129%. And I'm just keeping four decimals here to help you to ensure that uh, you're computing everything uh, accurately. We also need the percent of individuals who suffered a heart attack who consumed the aspirin. So again, I have the total number of individuals here who consume the aspirin, and 104 divided by that gives me, times 100, gives me the percentage of 0.9423%. So then take those numbers, and now here we consider the placebo as the control group. It's like the baseline. If you're just taking sugar pills or not doing anything, how many individuals, or what percentage of individuals do you think will suffer a heart attack? So we take that 1.7129%, uh, subtract the percentage for the aspirin, the treatment, and we're going to divide it by that baseline again, the placebo. And that gives us a result of 0.45. Now this is a ratio, so go ahead and just convert it to a percentage, uh, multiply by 100, and that's 45%. So the relative risk reduction consuming the aspirin is 45%. Now this ranges from zero to 100%, so we're kind of in the middle there. Doesn't sound all that impressive then, maybe a medium effect size. We don't have any Cohen's conventions here, so we just have to, to, to wing it. Next, we have the absolute risk reduction. 
And that's straightforward. You just take the percentage for the control group, subtract the percentage for the treatment, and there you see it's 0.77%. So I'm working with the percentages here. So that's a percentage, 0.77%. So I do not have to multiply it by 100. It's uh, good to go. Now that, as a percentage, will range from 0 to 1. 0 meaning basically no reduction. So we're a lot closer to 0 than we are to, I should say it ranges from 0 to 100%. So we're a lot closer to 0% than we are to 100%. So it looks like a very small effect size here. Then lastly, we have the number needed to treat, that's NNT. Pretty straightforward. All we do there is take that ARR percentage and move that decimal over two places to the left. So we're going to turn that into a proportion. So you need to take that percentage, turn it into a proportion, and then just take the reciprocal of that proportion. As you can see here, 1 divided by 0 0.0077, and that gives you 129.87. Go ahead and just round that because this is expressed in terms of individuals. So what this means is we would have to give 130 people the aspirin to prevent one fatal heart attack. Now you want this to be a small number, meaning, for example, let's say it were, it were 10. We'd only have to give 10 people the aspirin to prevent one fatal heart attack. Now that would be more, much, much more impressive than if we had to give, let's say, 1,000 people the aspirin to prevent one heart attack. So you want this number to be low, but again, it's difficult to interpret because you need to know a lot more information. How expensive is the aspirin? How dangerous is the aspirin to those who take it? How easy is it or difficult is it to administer the aspirin? So it's difficult to interpret this uh, as a standalone sort of statistic here. But mainly I just want to see that you can compute it and you understand what it means. 130 people would have to take the aspirin to prevent uh, one fatal heart attack.